Hello mga ka Welcome again sa ating uh, story ang Katoliko. And thank you for tuning in in our um, weekly show. And we, I'm so grateful for this day dahil uh, mapapaunlakan po tayo ng isa sa ating uh, kapatid na isi-share niya po about a supernatural story that he experienced in his life uh, noong year 2004. Grabe itong uh, na-experience niya at yung na-encounter niya. I'm sure marami po sa inyo ang talaga ma-inspire at mga bless po ng story ni Brother Christopher. And make sure mga faith na i-share po natin to sa ating mga friends and relatives. Today, hindi ko na po ito patatagalin mga ka-faith. Simulan na po natin yung uh, pag-interview po natin sa ating kapatid na si Brother Christopher. Uh, hello, Brother Christopher. How hello. are you? I'm good this morning. Yeah. And how are you? Uh, I'm doing great because uh, I'm so excited to uh, hear your story. And thank you so much for uh, this opportunity that you can able to share your uh, supernatural story that has happened in your life in year uh, 2004. So first of all, Brother Christopher, uh, can you first uh, introduce yourself to our viewers? What is your, what you're doing right now? Uh, can you share ab- about uh, your Catholic faith background before we jump into the main uh, story? Okay. Uh, well, I'm at home right now. Um, I was uh, raised Catholic since birth. My mother was also raised Catholic since birth, but uh, my father was a convert in college. Yes, he he used to be a Lutheran, but um, he was converted uh, mostly by his friends and um, a couple of uh, priest friends. And uh, they were married by Father Jerry Murray mm. in New York. Mm. And well, more about uh, my background is well, like I was, like I said, I was always raised Catholic, um, but sort of bread and butter, uh, mostly Novus, no, the Novus Ordo culture Catholic. And then when I got older, I was introduced more. To the traditional and the Latin Mass communities, wow. yeah. And um, now my parish is at Saint Mary Magdalene Parish, and um, it's in Everett, Washington. Hmm. And that actually has, I believe, the one of the largest Filipino communities, if not the largest Filipino community in the U.S. It, ah, there in Washington. Yes. Wow, I thought it's in California. Oh, um, I don't know if it is or not for sure, but I I do know that the that my parish has one of the largest wow um, Filipino no. communities. Mm-hmm. So currently, uh, uh, you are serving in your parish. Yes, and my fiance, who lives in, who lives just on the other side of the Canadian border. <laughs> She's a Filipino too. Yes. Yes, you know. mga uh, Filipina po yung uh, kanyang uh, fiancé. What's the name of your uh, fiancé? Uh, shout out to your fiancé. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Grace Ann Alice. Yeah. Grace Ann Ordonio Alice. So you've been together since uh, 2017. 2020. Then you will get married on. Oh, uh, we don't have a specific date set yet because we're still waiting for a 
K-1 visa process to go through. Wow. But uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you will have an an awesome family because your wife is a Filipina. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, marrying into a very faithful family. Ah, a very Marian uh, Catholic. Yes. Mm. So, ipag-pray po natin sila, mga faith. I'm sure uh, they will be such a wonder, wonderful uh, couple. And can you share more uh, some um, uh, about you, about yourself? Well, um, career-wise, I... Um, I'm a paraeducator for the local school district. And so we have an hour off right now. And mm. uh, while I'm doing that, um, I'm going to get my driver's license for the first time, hopefully on Friday. Well, first time. <laughs> yeah, first time because, I've been epilepsy, because I have epilepsy. And so I've had to wait wow. to gather um, all these requirements and go um, mm. along without a seizure. I finally passed all these uh, requirements, and now I just need mm. to pass the test. And um, at all, also going to be doing some online college classes this summer. Mm. Try to finish my degree. Mm. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there in US, it's already normal, right? In some school, I mean, face-to-face uh, -face class. Well. Um, yes, in most of the U.S., yes, it's no longer no longer a federal requirement. Um, mm. Some places will still require it, like um, some businesses. Mm. Actually, in the uh, classroom where I had been, I um, had to continue wearing a mask at least in the class while well, in the classroom mm. setting mm. because. Um, I needed to specifically protect the children mm. that I was working with and specifically the people that I was working with, even while the rest of the school was uh, fully opened up. Um, mm. Yes. Yeah, and you still need to, um, they require your um, mm. vaccination, certificate of vaccination ID. Mm. Yeah, but here in, in the Philippines, still we will, uh, still going there. <laughs> Well, face-to-face uh, -face class, uh, still uh, uh, hmm. the mass is still mandatory, but we're praying that everything will uh, yes, be back again to normal. To normal for you, you first uh, emailed me um, regarding your story, and you narrate to me how uh, all that happened, that uh, supernatural story, I was so amazed and uh, I mean that your encounter, I'm so excited to hear it uh, uh, from you, how you will uh, narrate it to us right now. Right, absolutely. And how, how, all, how does it all started, brother? Can you share it to, to us? Okay. Um, well, the factual background of how my vision started um, I uh, was in a troubled uh, place as a teenager, and um, uh, one day I, uh, just on Christmas Eve, on um, year I two thousand four. Oh, audio. Uh, it's in year two thousand four, right? Yes, in Christmas Eve two thousand and four, um, I decided that I was going to experiment uh, with hanging, with mm -hmm. hanging myself um, to see mostly what it would uh, be like. And I, it was supposed to be a controlled, it's kind of experiment, mm -hmm. um, but something went wrong where I lost consciousness and lost control. Mm -hmm. And so I died of asphyxiation and um, asphyxiation, uh, right? Yes, loss of oxygen mm. to the brain. Mm. Mm. And so for a few minutes, um, I was 
clinically dead, and not not metab not metabolically dead, but clinically dead. Wow. Um, but fortunately, my uh, one of my brothers came uh, to my room to get me for something for a question or something or something he wanted to show off mm. um, and, he, and he saw me and um, mm. yeah he uh, ran next door to his friend's house whose father was a firefighter and he was able to give me cpr and revive my heart and so i was taken to the hospital mm. uh, and they were able to perform surgery on me to mm. get um, the functions of my brain started again. Mm. But sometime within that time, um, and when I woke up um, from a coma three days later, um, I had a very inspirational vision. I'll, mm. I'll call it for our purposes here, an experience or an event or a vision at, at the most because this hasn't this has not of course been confirmed to be a miracle by the church mm, yeah i don't think it's even um been investigated as a miracle it mm. i related to a priest and would get into later it's a private revelation that you experience. Um, it's called private revelation. Yes. Hmm. It's like his private revelation would be a so good fit for it. Can you tell what's... Uh, this uh, vision that you saw is currently you are in, in a coma, right? Yes. Well, I was in a coma. What did you saw while you are still... Well, um, the first thing that I remember seeing is that I had um, this vision of mm -hmm. being, I um, simply came to be in this um, tunnel. It was a mm -hmm. burning, like a burning tunnel. Mm -hmm. First, there was this darkness. And mm -hmm. I don't really have a reliable sense of how long it lasted. Mm. But I found myself inside this tunnel, and it mm. seemed to stretch out for eternity. Wow. Um, mm. But I was still able to um, see Jesus Christ um, standing at the end of it or sitting on the end of it on a throne. And wow. he was he was like a judicial figure. Mm. And um, he was sitting upon a high throne. Mm. And the form of myself, I was I was crouched down and I was very dark and I had some um, animosity in my mind towards Jesus. Now, the walls of this tunnel, um, they seemed to be smoldering um, and they look, it looked like it was com um, compressed, like the wall itself would be like a paper tube that you hold, had rolled up, like the whole, mm. the whole tunnel was like two dimensional, but that was the edge of the universe. Very difficult to explain so, uh, some of these things um, because they are direct concepts, but I'll do my very best. Sure. So um, it was swirling and um, it was made up mostly of um, dark uh, orange and black. And I observed that there were these angular and twisted shapes um, floating around um, within where they were also like dark orange and black they were howling and they were um, screaming with pain and i uh you saw a crowd of people yes yes they were like enmeshed in into the whole tunnel 
just um, oh. swirling and on fire. And I perceived that these were the poor spirits of demons and of the damned, and perhaps some that were in purgatory going, undergoing purification. Oh. I don't know for sure about um, souls in purgatory, but that was the sense that I got. Uh, and the demons themselves, they uh, seem primarily to be black shapes, although the souls of people could be could be either one. Uh -uh. My form was moving towards the end of this infinite tunnel, first slowly, but gradually accelerating. Um, I could see the face of Jesus Christ. Initially, there was, um, he was kind of glaring at me with a kind of righteous indignation wow. and anger, um, similar to a uh, kind of animosity that I had in my heart. It uh, seemed to be that he was ready to judge me uh, for sins of my past life that I had died in yeah. state of. At that point, I was pretty much just resigned to it. You know, I didn't even uh, care so much. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was not this guy's friend. And Look then, at his face. Um, um, he was blazing orange. Uh, he was... Um, he was getting ready to pass his sentence, mm. but it was very bright, not like mm. dark, not like the dark tunnel, mm. and it outshone everything in my surroundings. And it was even very difficult to even look at him, even indirectly, mm. or in or direct, or of course directly without mm. being blinded you know like they say who can look on the face of god and yet live mm. as, as to moses uh, so i perceived um in my mind that i was about to be judged and that i was going to be condemned mm. so time was no longer the determining factor of this um, because my course was set, and it was just a matter of sequence, time in the sense of the vision. And this animosity, this, this enmity was growing between us uh, slowly as I drew nearer to him. And um, I was no longer alive in the proper sense, and I resigned myself to this condemnation. And I approached the footstool of him on his throne. And that's where, that's where the first major part of this vision. The second uh, part of this is the, the most difficult part of the most difficult part to describe um, because it involves seeing things which are not um, easily perceivable, much less describable to the human mind. So I'll try to draw this out and um, express, explain this a very uh, one piece at a time. Mm. This also uh, seemed to convey um, a flood of the most of the spiritual truths in this vision that I uh, received from it mm. later on in my life. As I'm approaching the end of this horrid tunnel, mm. and the surroundings, uh, this these glowing, firing surroundings, they transition into darkness of space. Mm. See the whole cosmic array, and slime, time uh, slowed down to an irrational scale, like infinity to a factor of zero. Mm. I could uh, faintly hear this kind of high droning singing sound coming mm. from the stars. 
like as if cherubs were hidden in tiny gaps of space that I couldn't see. It's like an angel. It's like an angel, right? Uh, singing. Yes. Little, mm. uh, yes, not high, not highly audibly, but um, very faintly. From out of the corner of my vision, um, like in the upper right from where I can see, I see out of the tiniest little corner of space, um, out of the tiniest little corner of time, this image, infinitesimally small, it sweeps around me to the left and is swiftly descending towards me. And as the figure comes around to the, to the farthest point of view on my left, mm. um, very, very fast, the time, the, my perception of time um, had slowed to a standstill and I could, and I could see this figure that was approaching me from um, mm. beyond, um, beyond time and beyond eternity. And this woman, she was cloaked in like the whole universe itself. Wow. Like her, her garments were made out of the universe that she had just been pulled out of. Oh, something that uh, very um, difficult to describe visually. Uh, that woman that you saw is uh, our blessed mother. This mo this um, lady I perceived to be our blessed mother, Mama Mary. To describe her, um, her face was very gentle, and um, it retained her beauty of a younger middle-aged woman. One of the things is I could see her soul. You could wow. see her soul. You could see it. It was oh. it was glowing and radiating um, that much that you could see it as if you were looking at it with your with your own eyes. You know, if you could have physical eyes to see it. It was Glorious. Materially perceptible. Her expression was full of pity and of tender sorrow. Suddenly, everything else around me uh, seemed to become kind of detached. To look at her on the left side as she's sweeping around, it seemed to last anywhere from a few seconds to, a few, to several years. Uh, then as suddenly it had begun, she, uh, she kept moving on and kind of blindsided me to the right, and I could hear um, this high-pitched shriek um, coming from her um, that went out and it filled the whole universe. And it was just a shriek that said, no! Oh, wow. No! And as she swept across, um, she came down to her knees in front of Jesus, and who was now standing um, just off to the right in a similar place where he was in relation to me back in the tunnel. And he uh, was at the very instant where he was about to deliver his, his verdict of condemnation to me. I could sense that. The very, mm. the very instant, right at this moment, he had the same expression of offended indignation. In my vision, I perceived that the woman was Mary, but I was very confounded at why she had appeared, or before then, even who this person was or what she had to do with any of it. Mm. She um, really blindsided me. And so Mary is on her knees. And she looks, looks up at Jesus. And by this point, I can't see her face anymore. She's looking up at Jesus. But she says in a low but audible voice, please spare this boy. Wow. And so I was confused at um, what had even prompted such a heartfelt intervention from her. I 
had not invoked any such intervention because of my emotional disposition and because of my life and uh, because I was just confounded by it all, it seemed undeserved. This is his face. Um, he instantly placated at her plea. He went from like to <laughs> something like that. Uh, Jesus' face. <clears throat> I perceived that he had decided to obey the request of his mother and not to condemn me there. Uh, both because um, both because of his love for her as his mother and mm. because um, when she asked about this, he found a justice in extending his mercy and allowing me to go back to try again. Uh, after that, it just faded into darkness. Mm. I was in coma for three days. And uh, then I slowly began to wake up and eat on my own. So that's the story of the uh, vision itself. Hmm. After I woke up in the hospital and started to get my bearings, I didn't understand everything that had happened, of course. Um, it took some explanation of the event, some unwrapping of it. Uh, it took place after I'd passed out to understand understand um, um, the significance of the story. And um, a couple of people who came to visit me in the hospital, uh, they were convinced that I had actually tried to kill myself. Uh, you know, that uh, kind of hurt them emotionally for a while, but... Um, but they, I, they, think they, they think you commit uh, suicide. Right. Right. Mm. right. But and how, how old are you? On, how how old are you? Oh, I'm 18 at the time. At the time. Mm. Yes. And to be fair, I didn't uh, have uh, my life in a completely stable place. But I, uh, this wasn't a suicide attempt. Uh, basically, but, uh, I'll give, but I'll give them grace for th um for thinking it was. Wow. You know because. Mm. Um, not a very ceremonious event and, um, you know, a lot of coincidence in there. Anyways, when I, um, um, I, I had remembered the vision that I had and I told um, the parish priest at the time who had come to visit me, I told him mm. about it. Mm. And he related it to his superiors, uh, but they decided not to investigate the event further as a miracle. So, uh, your parish priest is the he is the one who you first told the uh, that uh, experience that vision that you uh, uh, encounter. Yes, I think um, I think it was either him or my mother that I first told about it. Yes, it was not the same parish priest that I have at the time. Mm, I'm curious, uh, Brother Christopher. How does uh, Jesus look like? The structure of his face is a lot is a lot like the image of divine mercy. Of course, his mm. expression with me is a lot different, but it is like a lot like the divine mercy image and um, uh, the image of um, that we have from the Shroud of Turin. Oh, yeah, you know, structurally, facially. He's a lot like that. Is um, he? He's very hard to look at directly. Mm. For um, for me, at least, um, mm. you know, and that makes a lot of sense because an actual vision of hell or even of heaven—that's something. Um, a beatific vision, like you see God. Mm. Um, but something that, that would um, affect and probably scar a person um, yes. who, would, who would be exposed to something like that. Yeah, because like the, the Bible... Like Adama and like um, 
uh, saints who have had visions of hell before and nearly mm. died, right? Did Jesus say any words? Uh, did he spoke? Oh, no, there, no, there were no words. Mm. And um, um, it's interesting you brought that up. That was one of um, my little tidbit takeaways from this vision is that um, most of the communication um, was like directly a uh, mental bond. Mm. And I think um, that's, that's something that other people who have had near-death experiences have described. At least one or two people that I've uh, watched describing theirs. I don't know if that either has to do with the way the brain is working, but I think it also has to do with the fact that God's word actually carries power. His spoken word is power. And um, you know um, Christ, he substantially is the word of God. Mm. Amen. Wow. How about uh, Mama Mary? How did she look like? How can you describe <clears throat> her face? Uh, what's the closest uh, Marian image that you can uh, think that you saw on your on that vision? Well, that's Our Lady of Guadalupe. Oh wow! And um, yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of beautiful images of Our Lady, um, but Our Lady of Guadalupe comes the closest, and um, mm. I think that's also fitting because. You know, that was a miraculous image of her. Yeah, um, the Marian selfie. Yeah, she has, she's uh, fair skinned, but she has kind of a darker skin. And her hair is like a very, very dark um, brunette. Not quite, not quite black, but a uh, very dark brown. Mm. Very, very, very dark brunette. Mm. She is. Um, full of um, health and life. She's also full of uh, great gentleness. And you can see from her uh, maternal love. Uh, basically, Mara Faith, uh, what uh, Brother Christopher is sharing, that she, uh, he had a, uh, a vision nung siya ay yung naksidente, <clears throat> nakoma siya for three days. Then... Uh, nagkaroon siya ng vision na nandun siya sa isang tunnel and then uh, nakakita siya ng mga uh, mga taong na parang it's like uh, hell and purgatory. Magsisigaw niya mga tao. Uh, they are uh, weeping, nahihirapan. And then uh, nakita niya si Jesus na parang yung impression sa kanya uh, ni Jesus is going to judge uh, Brother Christopher. And then uh, on the hindsight, and uh, he saw another vision. Uh, again, this he's, uh, he saw Mama Mary na close ng buong universe. Parang yung, yung glory nun. And then, yun, parang ang nangyari, nung parang i-judge na siya ni Jesus, nag-mediate si Mama Mary between him and at sa kanyang anak na si Jesus. Then, yun, parang nung time na yun, hindi natuloy yung uh, judgment to Jesus, okay, uh, Brother Christopher. Wow, Brother. Uh, I think that uh, vision, it's like uh, what happened in uh, wedding at Cana. Yes, very much. And Go one on. big takeaway is that um, Jesus is not or hardly can ignore a request from his mother because her requests will always um, be in alignment with the will of God. Hmm. Yeah. Because Mama Mary is the f first follower and disciple of Jesus. <laughs> Since uh, the uh, Annunciation, 
when he uh, when she uh, obey the fiat let your will be done <clears throat> and uh, brother Je uh, brother Christopher I'm I'm curious uh, before all this happened that uh, accident and uh, vision uh, did you pray the rosary uh, every do you have a habit of praying the rosary every day no no before all that happened I hardly had any um, prayerful habits um, um, Wow. You know, would go to mass when um, my Where? family would go to mass, um, which, was already on the, which was already on the uh, <laughs> downtrend, let me say. Um, and I would, you know, do go with the motions of doing the sacraments properly. I've always um, um, been blessed to believe in the real presence of uh, God in the Eucharist. Mm. Um, and I've always uh, considered God as real and relevant, real and relevant to people's lives. Although uh, my life was going on, I for a little concrete, practical significance. After all of this, uh, I started praying to Mary slowly at first and then more. And then a couple of years ago, I uh, finished doing the total consecration to Mary. Wow. And, it's this yeah, uh, St. Louis de Montfort. Uh, the St. Louis de Montfort Marian consecration. Yes. And uh, by then I was um, saying the rosary every day. It really changed your life after that um encounter right yes mm. yes it did i feel like the rosary has actually been kind of um a rosetta stone into unlocking um, the memories of the things i saw and the meaning and the significance of it when i um wow. when i pondered the mysteries of the rosary and uh-huh um mm. Also, another, if I can give another shout out to sure. the priests of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, who, you know, they train priests to be very excellent priests and excellent preachers. Wow. And so I was very inspired um, by men and the teachings uh, by men like, I've been very inspired by the preachings of men like Father Heffernan and Father Gerard Zaguto, they've helped me to unpackage um, a lot of what I saw and a lot of the mysteries of the rosary that I uh, pondered on. Wow. Um, regarding your vision, did they share some insight? Yeah, okay. Uh, I guess the, big, the biggest, grandest takeaway is... Mm. Um, like I've always, I've always believed in God, uh, but when I had that vision, the, the whole idea of atheism and agnosticism completely shattered. When I saw Jesus, it wasn't just like I was looking at like the image of a great man or some powerful wizard. It's like um, to look at God is to see something of his of his divine substance. And in that way, God is more real than all of the foundation of reality itself. Wow. And I, th I think that's why people need uh, require require faith to believe in God, not to not even to reach up uh, so much as to reach down and to get um, the, the grasp on the reality that they hold, that they can see before them. How about uh, that vision you saw? I think it's hell or purgatory. How, how can you share about that one? How did you feel when you... Uh, 
saw and hear people screaming they are um, suffering i don't know um i was how did i feel i was are you terrified just like what uh, no. sister faustina when he was accompanied by her guardian angel not so much not mm-hmm. then i remember i was kind of um uh detached from that i remember um mm-hmm. slight pity but you know like i said before i was pretty much resigned to join them you know to be lost in this swirling vortex mm. and i i don't know if it's um hell per se or hell and purgatory per se but mm. the stuff of it is uh, still the same um, like the fires of hell You know what? It's uh, been 18 years since that uh, vision had that you experienced. And mm-hmm. how does this uh, vision change your life? How does this experience impacted your 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 Catholic faith? Uh, well, it got me going back to church again. Um, it's actually, kind of slowly, but. Um, It was something that I had to keep in my heart for a couple of years. Then after a couple of years, um, my neighbor invited to take me to church after he found that I uh, wasn't able um, to get uh, to get to church on my own. Mm. And this, uh, this kind of, well, it embarrassed my mother into being able to take me. Because remember, I have epilepsy, and so I can't... Uh, I haven't not been able to drive myself. And uh, that time I preferred going to, um, to some Latin mass. And so I got in touch with uh, another Latin mass parish um, that had formed in Seattle, and it was, uh, North American Martyrs, mm. uh, where Father Segura was actually the um parish priest at the time. So after I went to confession there, after a, quite some time, um, the visiting priest who was my confessor suggested that I get involved with the parish choir. Mm. And, I did. and we had um, a we had a Carmelite nun um, praying and singing with us. Who mm. was teaching us how to sing, and we really got into the um, depths of the prayers and the rubrics and the meaning of the Latin, and mm. it was inspiring to be around that whole group for so long, and in um, and um, even to see their patience with me as I was um, struggling uh, to get my. Uh, faith life back on track and um so i fully be uh, began to develop more and more prayer habits in my life and that eventually included uh the daily rosary and um, the consecration to, to mary and then just last year My fiance and I, Grace Nan, we did the Josephinian consecration. Um, Sorry, we did the Your... Josephinian consecration. Um, Josephine. Uh, yes, that Father Calloway wrote. Ah, oh, sorry, Saint Joseph. Oh, yeah, and and then yes. <laughs> and uh, my father also joined us in a big part of that. Um, mm, wow. Yes, he lo- he loves Saint Joseph very much. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, you know what? It's so nice to hear that uh, story, uh, that sharing f- from from you, because uh, men uh, nowadays are, you know what? They're, because of the uh, uh, macho man looking, you know, because, um, for them being uh, religious or having a uh, relationship with God, It's not relevant anymore, but and and 
and some men idolize you know the uh, celebrities um, mm-hmm. icons or some public figure but it's, um, anything, anything. I, I, you know i was just thinking about um something last night um mm-hmm. you know it partly re- relates to something um of a shortcoming in my life where mm-hmm. um, i like to pay so much attention to politics and to mm-hmm. the world and um you know internally things can really get to me the way um things in the world are so disrupted and we see more yes. and more of it and it's easier to see all of it on the internet and um at some point last night i was just thinking how how much how patient is has god been with us yes <laughs> who can he could who can see and observe everything yeah we, the brokenness we of this world every day mm-hmm. by um everything that we see mm-hmm. and you know, we probably should be to a degree but mm. god sees everything mm. and he sees us offending him over and over again and um you know even after he drained himself of blood to be able to forget it for our sake you know it's just like we keep we keep wanting to squeeze water out of a stone from him how much worse can humanity treat god but um and this is another uh point that i came to discover mm. from, from my, uh, my vision as well mm. or at least to understand is that the real reason that that mary is so protective of us and that mary wants us to convert is because it hurts god so much Be, because she is aligned to god um she's aligned to the trinity in a threefold way daughter mother and spouse and um it was not just god's own only begotten son it's her son as well and she had to witness him um expending all his his blood for us and she mm-hmm. wants that to have the maximum possible effect she has pity for us because she has pity for her son and she has a certain pity for herself because she is the co redemptrix and yes. she had to partake in that suffering wow and it's because it's um it's her mission it's um the will of god that um that christ gave her on the cross behold your son maybe um last two question before uh we end this uh interview uh what can you say for those um other uh religion that are not believing on the on on mama mary i mean mm-hmm. i mean they always uh had this argument that mama mary uh is not is dead already <laughs> and mm-hmm. he, she is not yeah. uh hearing our prayers <laughs> well i believe she i believe she did um die and that she was uh raised up to life and assumed mm. into heaven assumption so, yeah that's, yes that's my um understanding of it from tradition and records mm. um, i believe the church doesn't actually say something specific about whether she died or not but i believe mm-hmm. that she did um that's partly from tradition from records and from an account of one of the saints that yeah. mary wanted mm-hmm. to share in the process of death that were even her son underwent but mm-hmm. um, to say to all those people of different religions um first of all um i would not discredit those people so much uh, father um archbishop chain he once gave in a sermon uh, the difference between a catholic and a protestant is that 
a Protestant will have a few nice things to say about Mary, and a Catholic <laughs> will not have enough. <laughs> and um, interesting you bring up um, that kind of question. I um, have a dear friend in my boss who is just actually retired, and um, he's going to move very soon to mm. the East Coast. Um, she's a Lutheran, uh, but she's mm -hmm. a very spiritual and a very good-hearted person. Mm. She, um, she believes in the right things for the right reasons. And I um, was recently explaining to her a couple of key concepts about um, Marian theology and the, and the Eucharist. As it pertained to Marian theology, I told her about the fact of my um, vision and hmm. what happened. And um, I had to I um, had to address that Catholics do not worship Mary. There is actually a specific level of praise we give to her. There's a yes. deep level. There's the dulia, yeah, uh, hyperdulia. Uh, the hyperdulia, and um, above that, for God alone is, um, um, yes, the adorote. And, yeah. Right. I think um, what people, what Protestants tend to get confused about with Catholics worshiping Mary, the whole thing is they get, they see things like the rosary and they get confused mm. with the quantity of what they see in Mary, whether the rather than um, the actual quality of the prayer. Mm. Um, so when when I explained it that way, um, she was very receptive uh, to all of that and. Whoa. I explained to her some more of the uh, Marian theology that Whoa. Mary has a unique relationship to God, that she is um, still the highest creation. Creation. That's one of the things they teach. Creation. Yes, in the St. Louis de Montfort book, at least the, the version that I read of it. Mm. Um, she uh, actually, is Mama Mary is. Creation. Uh, is made more than, by God. More than the angel, <laughs> right? Yes, but for a specific purpose. So finally, with um, dealing with those kinds of arguments, I would encourage you to. I'd encourage people to reach out by addressing addressing things issue by issue, topic by topic because the church is the only church, the Catholic church is the only church that contains all of those issues and topics as truths. So once um, you get, once you get the understanding of these difficult concepts out of the way, and people have um, difficulty with these concepts for different reasons, either because uh, are difficult intellectually or because they conflict with something they've been taught or because internally they just feel um, the pull towards um, real, um, towards real liberty towards liberty and um, fr uh, free religiosity so once um, you get these topics and these concepts out of the way then you can um, then you can point to the church and say, here is where you can find all these things, all these mm. treasures of wisdom. Right. Mm. Because everything, the que everything, their arguments about us is already there. I mean, right. But there's, a lot of, but the there's a lot of fog and it's hard to see past it, especially when you're on your own or when it's the blind leading the blind. Uh, any last word to our to our viewers i don't know if i have any very profound last words except to reassure you that god is real and let's hope that you never have and uh, hell is real 
yes, that God, no, 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 I'm saying God is real. However real hell is, hell is just um, either a construct of um, God's justice or the, the result of being outside his justice. Mm. But God is even more real than all of that. And let's hope that you never have to have a kind of vision like I had in order to realize that or in order mm. to be firmly mm. grounded in that. Mm. Because um, one thing, um, one way in which this vision did scar me very much was in not in coming to the realization that God is real, but in simply in beholding the, that God is real and the level to which God is abundantly real and realer than realness. Amen. It, it's just not something that you can understand with, um, with you know, so many years of just pondering. Um, so I felt like I've been a little bit scarred, uh, kind of in the way, kind of in the way that um, St. Thomas was. He had to see, see the first. <laughs> had to see the wounds and mm, see before he before he believed. Mm. And his well, I believe yes. And so be encouraged by that. Uh, Jesus tells him, "Blessed are those." Who do not see and yet Amen. believe. Amen. Amen. And um, something else, um, devote yourself to Mary in some way because um, she is um, like a magnifying glass for for all your prayers and um, the best the best one to take all your prayers to God. And I even now. Um, um, include try to include my my guardian angel in that as well because well who's going to be the best messenger to heaven mm. between me and heaven that's the one who's specifically um, tasked with that mm. so try to have some kind of uh, Marian devotion in your life and ask for her help as well because she will help you keep the graces that you get um, mediatric of all graces mm. and, uh, something I've, I've very slowly re realized over um years of devotion to the rosary is that mm. all of the mysteries of the rosary are very interconnected mm. um even um though they might bear different themes, uh, they are, they are relational of um, similar concepts um, under what we undergo different times in our lives. Mm. And also of different sacraments, of course, particularly with the, the luminous mysteries. Probably most of your viewers are familiar with that um, each mystery uh, contains a fruit. Um, like, let's say, obedience, for example. Mm. The joyful mysteries, uh, fourth joyful mystery is the presentation in the temple for obedience. Mm. Um, there's, um, the, um, this is foreboding ceremony, but it's a joyful ceremony that Jesus is being brought to the Lord. Amen. And the sorrowful mysteries, the fourth mystery is a bit different. It's actually undergoing the task. It's undergoing the drudgery and being obedient. And um, like as in the glorious mysteries, um, it's our turn to fulfill the scriptures and our turn um, to be obedient to God in the form of the church that he's established and mm. be brought up to heaven with him. Mm. 
where all things are fulfilled. So that's one kind of example. There's also, the, um, and specifically in the fourth mystery, there's always uh, the elemental theme of going up. You are going up to the temple, you are going up um, the hill, you are, um, you are going up uh, the mountain, you are mm. moving up to heaven. Yeah, yeah, it's interconnected. Yes. Mm. Yes, and there and all the mysteries I believe are interconnected in some way, but put a great deal um, in that in that one, two, three, four, five pattern. Mm -mm. Wow! Thank you for that wonderful insight. Uh, first time I heard that. Uh, wow! You made me realize that. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of, uh, well, I've already actually started to write about that, but I'm. Um, finish something i'm uh writing about that i'm thinking publishing about that uh, do you have a uh website or blog or oh no no i don't mm. i'm i'm not good with uh getting a website or a or a blog set up and i don't i i have way too many accounts on internet sites and maybe someday uh, if I if I have the time to maintain a website, then I will do that, and I and I will post everything. But um, right now, I'm more concerned um, with my life and doing my work and doing the material. Mm -hmm. Then, when you, how can you publish that if you finish writing online? Mm -hmm. so I was thinking actually of uh, sub submitting. A lot of the things I write about and a lot of the things I do to the local archbishop for approval, Archbishop Etienne. So it will be compiled as a book? Uh, perhaps. Perhaps if I, if I ever make a book about these things. Mm, you should, you should. I have, a lot, of, I have mm. a lot of um, patched writings to put together. <laughs> Maybe you can share some of it, and I can be able to read that one. Your your writings. Sure. Yeah. In fact, I um had a couple of just a couple of sketches that I can um share with you. One of them's the painting that I did, or one of them's the sketch I did on my iPad. Of they're both of the second portion of my vision. Let me try to see if I can get one of them to you. Ah, right. sure, sure. So that uh, we can able to, uh, it's okay to share it on sure. on on our viewers. Oh yeah. Mm. Maybe you can just email it to me. Thank you so much for your time. I know yeah, you're absolutely. a, I know you're a busy man, and yet you still give time and share to us that supernatural story that you experience with Jesus and Mama Mary. And I'm sure many people who will uh, listen to this uh, interview uh, can change their life, uh, just like what happened in your life right now. I was thinking, but, uh, here's, here's praying, here's hoping that, yeah. it, that this does touch a lot of people's lives. Because you know, that's why I'm sharing it today. That's um, I think this um, belongs to all people, even though it um, might have affected me directly. I was, you know, very hesitant about sharing it for many years. Um, mm. I only told a, f a few people here and there, like if I felt compelled to, uh, partly because I didn't want to like get in trapped in uh, spreading rumors or errors and partly because I didn't want to be this about drawing attention to myself. So now I'm more comfortable about doing that. So Amen. This is, this is for the church. This is for the world. Amen. And thank you for uh, thank trusting, you, brother, Amen. trusting my platform to be, uh, to share your story of course, my fiance is a big fan. 
<laughs> Hello, shout out to your fiance. Grace. I'm, I'm praying for both of you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And that our K1 visa will come through very soon. Yeah. Mm, I'm looking forward. And uh, can we re- can we request for a uh, closing prayer uh, from you, brother Christopher? It's if it's all right. Yeah. Okay. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of thy love, Amen. and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Please. Teach us, our Father, how you want us to act in our lives and give us a greater appreciation for you through your mother, Mary, and for your great gift of Mother Mary. Amen. Because we can never fully appreciate or express the great gift of salvation that you've given us without Amen. her to unlock it. Amen. Um, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. In Mary, Mary's intercession and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Christopher. Thank and you. I will pray for you and your fiance and hope to meet you soon. Thank you. God bless. God bless. And mga ka I invite you to check out my merch store sa Merchiful at sa Shopee. Kung interested ka na makita yung aking mga merchandise item, punta ka lang sa link na ilalagay ko sa baba or sa taas ng video na to. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope na na-bless at na-inspire ka dito sa aking vlog. Make sure na i-like mo at mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to. At mag-subscribe ka sa aking YouTube channel para lagi ka updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. At huwag mo din kakalimutan na i-like ang aking page. So this been Adrian Milag, encouraging you to live your life to the fullest. God bless you more abundantly.